we kind of, from last class, we were talking <clears throat> somewhat more about in Christ and trying to take some different angles of that. And, um, and let's see. See, this is, this is a problem if somebody wants to do this because Skype people are not going to be able to hear me. Still on that, I could just roll it around with me. And I'm talking to y'all. Anyway. Um, so the, the normal for years and years and years and years chart that I've used has been um, that represents Adam with the M just slightly outside of that. And then there's the cross, and then this is Christ. Oops. And then with a T slightly outside of there. And then we are in Christ. So most people, I think I actually quit doing this some years back, but, you know, looks like Christ has pimples. That's us. <laughs> That's what we are, Dean. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's beautiful. But then there's us. In him. <laughs> oh, Lord. Please have a sense of humor, Lord. <laughs> so, and so we say that Jesus took on the nature of Adam, which the scriptures tell us that, and he went to the cross, and not only did he die, but he put us to death in Adam. And took us to the cross. So, and then he rose, and now we are in Christ. That's the that's the basic picture that we've used, modified in various degrees, but sort of the basic thing. <clears throat> but then we talk about being in Christ, and you know, I, I, we're probably not going to be able to fully get the next chart because I'm going to put it below there. Anyway, or maybe I can put it over here. All right. Um, so we have over here, we have the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So here's some good, here's some evil, here's some good. Here's some, you know, if I really wanted to do this right now, but I'm not. I'm going to just keep going with this. Um, and in various places, having various things, all that tree of the knowledge of good and evil pertaining to both good and evil. And then over here we have the tree of life. Okay. Okay. And so, um, we talk about, uh, we talk about, you know, an identity change. That's the biggest thing that you hear when people teach about being in Christ. There's an identity change, you know. So, you're no longer a little Adam. You're just a neutron. No, you're no longer in Adam. And you are, I, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> Whoa. Anyway, um, so we say, well, our identity is no longer here in the old creation. Our, our identity is no longer who we were in our B.C. days before Christ, before we were born again. Um, so we say, now we're in Christ, and in Christ is our identity. But in truth, our identity is no longer here, and it's no longer here. Our identity is here at the cross. We're dead. We have no identity. Christ is our life. He's not just an identity to us. He's not just supposed to be... Well, let me pull out my identity and show you my driver's license, you know. Like, 
Like we can have an identity and still be us. Does that make sense? You know, and that's sometimes that's the way it's taught, that we have, you know, now I'm identified in Christ. Well, now you are in Christ, and Christ is the fullness of that identity, but your identity, his, is Christ. Your identity is that you're dead, and now he is your life. Okay, so that happened when? That happened 2,000 years ago. And if you want to add 20 to it and then do some math, you can do that. But this death, um, in the most real sense, does not need to happen in you. It needs to manifest in you. It's a big difference. So we're going, I want, you know, I need to be dead. You know, on one hand, we can go, I, I hear it, and my spirit bears witness. I need to be dead. You know, I'm supposed to be dead, but I don't act like I'm dead. In fact, I'm, it's worse than I don't act like I'm dead. I act like I'm still Adam, and, you know, and I see Adam's fruit all over me, you know, and so you can look over here at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and all of that working in you <clears throat> and, and worrying about that and trying to do anything from crucify yourself. Uh, and there's a big difference between crucifying yourself and reckon your, reckoning yourself dead, right? To crucify yourself means that you're still alive and you're trying to put yourself to death. To reckon yourself dead, as it talks about in Romans 6, verse 7, is, um, well, it's just, an, you know, it's, it's looking at the cross. It's believing in the cross. It's, it's an old Texan thing. Well, I reckon I'm dead, <laughs> actually. But that's, the very fact of it is, that you're reckoning on something that happened before you were even born. Jesus took care of that. And Jesus took care of that because he wanted us one with him. And when you're one with him, when you're one, if you're, if you're like, let's say that Jesus took a girlfriend. I know he didn't, and I know, but I'm trying to make a point. Okay, again. You know, <laughs> never mind. But he's, you know, so Jesus takes a girlfriend, and so she's identified with him. So who did you come to the party with? Jesus. <laughs> you know, I'm identified there. And I'm looking there, and I'm thinking, yeah, there, there, there. That means you're still around. That means your identity has not truly hit you that you don't have an identity anymore except a life. You have a life, and his name is Jesus. And you're one with him. You know, If you're born again, you're one with him whether you like it or not <laughs> because that's what the cross did. That's what this was all about, okay? And so as, as one with him, then what do you do? You, you know, I mean, we, we might always try to, to uh, put down bad thoughts or bad actions or whatever and stuff like that, but there's nothing going to remedy that except the cross and your death. See, we say, well, the cross remedied everything. Yeah, including you, by doing away with you. It remedied all things, including you. So now when he rose, you're in him, but you're not, you're not, he's not your identity. He is your life. And the Holy Spirit just started bringing that to bear for me because as long as we're saying, you know, again, I think that picture of pulling out your driver's license or if the cop asked you for your identification, here's my identity, here's who I am. Let's see, you're... So and so years old, you're so and so weight, your hair color, you wear glasses. Um, so, okay, 
Well, that card's not you. <laughs> it may be describing you, but it's not you. That's your identification. I mean, I would prefer going, I am me. You know, I don't need a driver's license to, for an identification. Just look. I'm actually here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, they don't go for that too much. They don't go for a lot of stuff. Some of you know this, but I got pulled over once, and, and um, so I said, let me, let me see your driver's license. So he's looking at it, and he said, uh, I guess he was figuring that it didn't look exactly like me, and he said, when's your birthday? And I said, February 14th. And he said, what year? And I said, every year. <laughs> he really didn't like it at all. Oh. No, he didn't. He didn't give me a ticket, but he didn't like it. So, can you all kind of see what I'm talking about? The difference between a card that supposedly is your identity and your real self? I think, this is my opinion, I think Christians are regularly kind of going by a card that says I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ instead of I'm, I'm dead. Christ is my life. Christ is my life. If you're born again, he is your life. Are you living every second according to him? No. Is he still your life? Yes. Am I dead? Yes. Am I dead when I don't act like I am? In God's reckoning, that's why he says you need to reckon. In God's reckoning, there is no you in the you form in the separate you form. Now, yes, 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 you have a body and you have a personality, so do I. <laughs> and and uh, you, you're, you're you in that sense, but that's Christ who is in you. And the you that you would wrestle with is dead. And you were not raised up. He was raised up. You, we, we were raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places. But that is understood as not together like, oh, look, both of us are going. Right? That's not what it is. In him. In him. I'm in him. And all that he is is mine. Now, I may need to still walk out the land, the promised land. I may need to walk out all of the vastness that is Christ in, where, in which I have been placed. But as you walk that out, you're not just learning Christ as if a separate person. You're learning who you are in him. Does that make sense? And if you get that down, if you get that in your head and in your heart, then when the devil comes up and says, well, you know, you're not in Christ, you go, shut up. You know, you're not going, I'm not. Or, you know, or you start making mistakes and failing and doing all this kind of stuff. And you start going, well, I don't seem to be able to live it. No kidding. If you're dead, there's no way. you got no hope of living it. But the reason why we say, I can't seem to live it, is because we have not found our identity at the cross. And therefore, our life in him. So we go, well, I'm, I'm failing. I'm failing a lot. I just feel so bad. I feel so terrible. You know, instead of going, but thank God I am in him. But here's what you have to say. You cannot, if you do this, then you're, you're already voiding it out. If you start saying, well, it doesn't matter what I do, or uh, you start doing that kind of stuff. If you have no desire to grow up in him, then what are you doing in him? Grow up in him in all things. Who is the head? Doesn't it say that? Colossians. 
If you have no desire, then you're like a foreigner in, in, in the, land, the promised land. God told Abraham. God told Joshua. Go mark out the length and the breadth and the height and the depth and possess what is yours. I, he said, I've already given it to you. See, that's what he said to Abraham. I've already given it to you, but walk it out. That's what he said to Joshua. It's already yours. Go walk it out. Go possess every part of Christ that you can possess. Will we attain to that in this life? I, I doubt it. Serious. I doubt that anybody will. I, he's so vast. We will, as it says in Ephesians, throughout the eternal ages to come, be learning the riches of Christ. Which, what does that tell you right there? The whole understanding will be that you're in him. Learn, you're not going to be sitting at his feet going, oh, there's so many riches. So many. Tell me more. You know, it's not, that's not what it's going to be like. You're still going to be in him. You know, well, when I get to heaven, I won't be in him anymore. I'll be in heaven. See, that's what I felt, too. That I, <laughs> well, you know, I don't want to be in heaven. I want to be in him. And if I'm living in him now, I'll live in him then. You know, if he's in heaven or hell or whatever else, I want to be with him. And I want to know him. So you make your <clears throat> existence surrounded by that. I, you know, you know, when you go to a college or a business school or something else, a lot of times they will talk about goals. What are your goals? What are your goals? You know, and um, you, you know, you, you, you know, what you do is you are confronted with, <clears throat> well, if this is your goal, this is what it'll take to get here. So, if I had a little more room on this chalkboard, I'd show you. Maybe I'll do something here. All right, so this is my goal. This Easter egg, <clears throat> that's the big G, my big goal. Okay, so I'm pursuing that, and I'm over here. Looking this way. Okay, I want, I've, got, I've got these goals. I want to reach these goals, whether that's business school, college, seeking Christ, so you're told <clears throat> that if you want to do that, <clears throat> you have to start setting up your life in the interim to reach those goals. You can't be going off down over here or over here and ever expect to reach those goals. That's what they teach you. You say, well, how do you know? I went to college a little bit. Didn't graduate because I was doing stuff. <clears throat> that stuff right there. <laughs> but um, I didn't have any goals when I went to college, you know. And so you, if, if you do that, then you don't do things contrary to reaching that goal. That's, that's what they tell you. And they tell you that, that it is counterproductive to do this or think that or go there or whatever. You stay on track till you've reached that goal. Okay. Wouldn't that sort of apply to us if we're seeking the Lord? You don't just go off track and go, well, you know, this looks nice over here. You know, this, this tree over here looks really nice. It ha it's not all nice. You know, there's evil. But... But at least there's good there. So the serpent's in there, and what is he? Let's just say he's pure evil. Let's go with that, okay. I don't know. I've never met the guy. <laughs> but, <we're laughs> but if he's pure, he's pure evil, okay? So he's in here, but he goes, you know, they're going to, since all they've ever known is God, they're going to figure me out. 
So I need to present something that has evil, that also has good, which is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, so that they can, it can be not so harsh a blow that you're just joining with evil. You know, sometimes I'm evil and sometimes I'm good. Wrong tree, right? All the time, and if you're born again, you're dead. Yeah. Or shall we go to the tree of life? Dead. Woo. Looks good to me. It looks good to me because there's life out of that death. So you go, you get born again, and you're coming out of a death that has no life into a life that gives itself in death or self-giving. So um, let's look at Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two and verse ten. Ten and eleven. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. All right, so let's let's think about this for a minute. Therefore, I'm going through all this trouble and trial and things, attacks of the enemy, having to lay down my life, having to give myself. I endure all these things for their sake so that they may obtain the salvation. But see, we say, we end it right there, that they may obtain salvation. But he says, salvation which is in him. Okay? So this tree of the knowledge of good and evil or this tree of Adam any way you want to put it God's plan for that tree was when Jesus came he was going to lay the axe to the root and then if you if you want him then he'll graft you out he'll cut you out he'll cut you out and then he'll graft you into him and he'll be the vine and you'll be the branch okay so he lays the axe to the root, and he laid, then, then when, when you're calling unto him and saying, Lord, I want you, he lays that axe to you and cuts you out of there, and he puts you in him, and everything that is life in him can flow to you. Right? All right. So... What, is, what does all that mean? We, say, we can say, well, I have a new identity. I'm, I'm a branch. Okay, come on, let's think about this. You were a branch over here. Right? You were a branch over there. And you were cut out of that life. You were cut out of that life. So I mean, we're just retracing what I was teaching with this chart, okay? You're cut out of that life as a branch. Anyway, and uh, just checking to make sure y'all are paying attention because I'm notorious for, I can get the best sound you could ever, I, I can't. All right, anyway, are y'all listening? Okay, then I won't do it. Okay. And you're really the same branch when you're put into the vine, aren't you? Oh, but there's a difference. You're the same branch, but you don't have the same life, right? So that life, and that, that's a, to me, the vine branch, I'm sorry, that's just the way I am. Am I getting chalk all over me? This, this is a great picture. 
But I think, I think this thing of divine branch relationship She can't take me anywhere. Um, is su such a greater picture. So you see, see, being in here like a pimple or something, being in there still leaves you with your identity. Do you see that? You're, it's, it's me, but I'm in him now. But it's me. See? And how do you know that? Because I'm one of those little circles. So, no, no, this was you and your life in Adam, and he cut you out, and he put you in Christ, and now Christ fills your branch. All right, so we say, okay, so we say, well, he's not doing a very good job. <laughs> Would you believe that he's doing the best he can, Captain. <laughs> he's, doing, he's going as fast as he can. Okay. But we have all this stuff, and then that, this is where you start getting into the parable of the sower and all that kind of stuff. We have all this stuff, and most of it isn't like, it's not like the Adamic nature, not really because God reckons it dead, and therefore he tells us to. It is our lack of fully comprehending what is settled and done in his heart. Um, and, and in doing that, we're, we're still flailing. We're drowning instead of floating. We're, we're trying instead of accepting. What does that scripture say in Ephesians 1, 6, isn't it? We are accepted in the Beloved. It didn't say we're accepted by the beloved. We are accepted in, 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 whatever. We are accepted in him. That's where our acceptance is. Not just, so, so okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do good works. Now we're back to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, trying to be with God because we're not seeing anything, so, well, I'll just do this for him or for the church or for the glory of God, you know? And so we're going to do good stuff, and we're pulling off good fruit off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and we're going, well, this is good, you know? This isn't bad. Why, you know, Jesus, why are you looking at me like that? This is good. And he just keeps looking and you go, it's not bad. You know? <laughs> he just keeps looking and we go, okay, I get it. You know, wrong tree, right? He'll go, you know, he'll go see, see that scar in my hand. I didn't get that from playing around with that wrong tree. I got it from you playing around with it. So, um, so, the, so Paul is, has this life, this nature, this lamb nature, and he's going through all of this stuff. Uh, I endure all things for the elect's sake, and he's doing it for them. He's not doing it for himself, just like Jesus died on that cross for us, not for himself. And it's, the, and it's, it's life flowing from the vine into his branch. And so he goes on to say that, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus. Saved from what? Saved from Adam? Saved from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Saved from me yeah. and my old identity. Okay? So he's saying, you know, I'm doing this by his life so that you might obtain and, you know, you know, in truth, I mean, it is the salvation because I just described it all in those terms. But it's really that I may obtain being in him and him being my life. I want you to obtain, obtain that also. Verse 11, it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. What do you think about 
Verse 11. Where'd that come from? Just popped up, didn't it? Just jumped out at us. We thought we would just somehow be identified in Christ because somebody said our identity is in Christ. This says it. It's a, th he, Paul is saying, look, I, I just want to tell you something. This is a faithful saying, what I'm about to say. Okay, I want you to know that it is. This is not a joke. This is not a, um, a deceptive thing. What I'm about to tell you is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Okay, so that's, that's it. There's, a, there's the, the exchange. The exchange is right there at the cross. And the cross was a death. If we be dead, if we be dead. Okay. Well, what is the we be dead? If we be dead, what is that? Our old life in Adam or our life living off of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or all of the things that, that we can live off of, if we be dead to that, we shall also live with him in union with him, in union with the tree of life. We shall partake of the tree of life. We'll finally partake of the tree of life. See? All right. So let me, let me hit you with another one here. So this is... Uh, this is chapter 1, verse 14 of 1 first, first Timothy. 1 first Timothy, sorry. 1 Timothy 1, 14. <clears throat> and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. He's saying the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in him. Our Lord made it more than just, it's like you're over here and your disciples and here's your Lord and he makes it to the cross and in making it to the cross, he's saying um, faith and love is in him. So instead of trying to look so much um, in your branch for faith and love, try looking into the vine. Because that's where it says it is. Now, this is one of tons of scriptures that say this, okay? I'm just grabbing a few, and I'm, I'm particularly grabbing a few that maybe some of you who've been around for a while, you know, it's refreshing to you a little bit to go to... Go, go to some different scriptures on that. But it's just as plain as day, and that is that if he is the vine and to be in him is not just a circle, then it's going to come, it's, it's all in him, and we draw from what's in him. What does it mean to draw from what's in him? It means to be a branch. Okay, what if you come up you come up to the, uh, the tree of life and you, oh, praise you, Lord. Praise you. Give me peace and love. Give it to me, Lord. I'm ready. I, have, I don't have peace. I need some peace and some love. Okay. Wrong method. There's no cross. There's no death. There's just, I'm, I'm sorry if I say it like this, there's just Christianity. There's no Christ. There's no Christ crucified. There's no, there's still me. I'm still alive. I'm, I'm, I am um, uh, uh, walking contrary to the cross. I am asking contrary to the life in the vine. I am. I mean, 
I don't say this with anger, but you're, you're perverting the very truth that he died to bring about. Because you're, you've made it, again, you're still alive. You're separate now. You're outside of him. You're, you've, have you been taught that you're in Christ? Oh, yeah. I've, I remember the study that we had on all that I am in Christ. Well, it's not what you are in Christ. It's who he is. And that's what we're growing in. Grow up in him in all things, as I quoted earlier. So this method of just coming and go, crying out and going, oh, it, it's, it is um, walking over the top of the crucified on our way to try to get something from Jesus. And it's not believing the work of the cross, or can we be more specific, the death of the lamb for us. It's living outside of that. All right. So let's go to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Some of you who've been around for a while, maybe years and years, particularly way back, does this chalkboard start, is it starting to look familiar? <laughs> the old days. Man, I would have the wildest looking chalkboard after you get through and everyone would go, what is that? What does that mean? Because I draw so many charts in there. Yeah. Robert said the guy standing right here looks like an alien, which is the way God sees us. No, but no longer aliens, he says. Do you remember that? It literally says that in the King James Bible. We are no longer aliens. But this guy is. Why? Not the shape of his head. The way he's relating to God makes him an alien. All right. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So we go, we go, okay. You know, Lord, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give thanks for the flat tire I had today. And Lord, I'm gonna give thanks for my boss who is not my boss anymore because he fired me. <laughs> and I'm gonna give thanks for, you know, um, Someone who stepped on my ingrown toenail and it hurt like heck. Thank you, Lord, for that. Um, so we try to we we try that. Anybody ever tried giving in everything giving thanks? Raise your hand. At least once. <laughs> okay. Uh, how did it go? Not so good, because he's not saying give thanks in this earth, but everything that is in him. Everything that's in him. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. The will of God in Christ Jesus. That you're supposed to be living there, and if you're living there, then you are thankful constantly because it's not you. And because the Father is glorified with his Son. But you have to do that in everything, not just the good things, not just when you think, well, I'm really, you know, I'm really showing the Father, the Son right now. Uh, there's a good chance that you're not. No, I'm just being honest. Maybe you are. I don't know. What? I don't know. But I would say there's a good chance that you're not because you're probably too full of yourself. How, do you, how can you be full of yourself saying, I'm so glad I'm giving you the Son? I could see it, maybe. What do you think? <laughs> Anybody ever done that before? Yeah, okay. Um, but it is, uh, it is regardless of what you think your status is in Christ. Because there is no status. There's only a person. It's him and we're in him. But we, we, we have, you know, 
status and 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 you know different measurements. And so at times we measure ourselves as well. I'm doing really good in Him, and uh, other times we measure ourselves that we're not. It's not about how good you're doing. It's about Him. Now, you know, you, some of you are looking at me like, well, Randy, I've heard you talk about that we needed to live Christ. Well, yeah. Yes, we do. But not instantaneously. We need to grow up into him in all things. And that growing up takes a while. Um, it should never, ever, 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 ever be an excuse that we say, I'm, well, I'm in Christ, so it doesn't matter what I do or say or who I, how bad I treat somebody or whatever. At least I'm still in Christ. Didn't you teach that about a month ago, Jim? You see, you did. You, you taught something just like that. You know, you, you don't. You know, that's not an excuse. We want the Lord in his body, and we represent his body. Amen? Amen. But, can I, can I back off again now? But, some of you have been at this for a long, long time, and you have Christ coming out of you in certain ways, but w are you satisfied? Is it enough? Okay? Me neither. Um, so, that, so that we could go, so, so that anybody, so that young people uh, could go, well, you know, I'm just failing the Lord because I don't see his son in me or whatever. Well, even that's debatable. God is completely different than us. His realm is. His mind is. Everything about him is completely different. And everything, this is just me, sorry, but everything that's religious that doesn't seem to declare him, I really would rather just kind of back off and go look for him. I just want the Lord. I just purely want the Lord. But I know that in my searching, I never have to get discouraged unless I'm faking it or unless I'm not sincerely seeking him and I'm just got have it on cruise control. If I am genuinely seeking him, maybe, maybe I haven't read the word in two months or <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one, but it could be, you know. Um, you know, you go, oh my God, I'm slipping, you know. Well, get your goals straight again, you know, because you only slip if you've put other things in front of that. But you're still in Christ. And all of the riches, what does it say? All of the riches of the grace and glory of God are, are in him. They're in him. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Okay. So, so we can say, well, I don't really know about all that great abundance and faith and love, but I'm still in Christ. And I'm, Lord, I just want to make it clear, while I haven't got, got it like I want it, I'm still pursuing the worst thing you can do is stop, right? Because it's already done. <laughs> it's already done. Why, why would you throw away? That would be like, that would be like going to college and on the 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 day before you, you know, the, it's getting close to graduation time, and then you drop out, and you spend all that time, and you quit. And they go, well, you didn't get your degree. I'm just trying to show things. You don't have to be perfect every moment. You don't have to have it all. You may look at people around here and think they're really super spiritual. They're not. I'm not. But I want the Lord. I do. I do, I want the Lord. And I, I've set my course. And I've stuck with it for all these years. This is what I want. 
you know. Well, don't you want, you know, not really. I want him. I, I, I have not yet attained, but I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ. That's what Paul said. Even he hadn't attained. So there's an anchor. Hebrews talks about that anchor. That anchor is related to being in Christ. Okay? There's an anchor. Your ship may be bouncing off of the storm of uh, the waters and the waves of the storm up above, but you've got an anchor that's not going to move you. All right. What time is it? All right. Let's try um, still. No. Yeah, First uh, Timothy 2.6. Have you ever read First Titus? It's just the book of Titus. Since there wasn't any more, it's just Titus. But it is First Titus. Okay. 1 Timothy 2, 6, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, whereunto I am uh, ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. Okay, so here he is, um, he is describing the nature of the being of, of the one in whom he is, who gave himself a ransom for all. I speak the truth in that person. I lie not. This is what I am. This is who I am. What he is, and that my little branch is plugged into him, then then that's more than my identity. That's my life. See? So, you know, I don't, and, and if somebody around here is teaching and they start talking about Christ being your identity, don't throw rocks at them. It's fine. Let them say that. But, could you just in your mind say, you know, Christ, that identity is a person, and I'm in that person. It'll make a difference. I wouldn't say it if I didn't think it'd make a difference. It'll make a difference. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I do, but I do like that statement. I speak the truth in Christ. I lie not. I wonder what a lie would be. Not speaking or, or speaking truth that is not in Christ. Truths that are not things that are in him. Think about it. Could that be a lie? Because it's not true. I mean, you can say, you can say, well, oh God, what's wrong? I just, I'm not dead yet. That would be a lie. You're not speaking the truth in Christ. I feel like God's left me. Are you born again? Yes. And you're in Him. Stop speaking lies. Right? Wouldn't this be, you know? I mean, in, in, in practice, we should do that within ourselves. We should do that with others. You know, I mean, if we're faithful to one another, speak the truth in love. I didn't say slap them around. Say, no, the better way to say that is <laughs> just speak the truth in love. That's what the scriptures say. But say, well, really, according to 1 Tim Timothy uh, 2.6, that would be a lie because... You are dead. You just haven't come to the fullness of what God has for you, and you're, but you're on your way, you know. So don't give up. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep going. He wants you to. Say, but I'm just so weary. I'm just so heavy laden. Come unto me, ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Well, for I am 
So I will give you rest for I am meek and lowly. So when he's talking about come unto him, he's talking about this reality of being in union with him, being a branch into that life. Come unto him for I am meek and lowly. And I, in that spirit, will give you rest. So, well, you know, I'm, I'm not meek or lowly. Come unto me. Because <laughs> I am. Uh, how about Philemon? Y'all like Philemon about this subject, don't you? Some of you guys love, love Philemon on this one. Philemon 1.5. <clears throat> I mean, Philemon is just the most encapsulated reality of being in Christ, of settling the death, of, um, of uh, living the, the actual nature of Christ in a practical situation. And it's such a short book, but it's just jam-packed with luscious reality called Jesus, Lamb of God. Hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual, may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ. Don't you love that? It's so good. We should just thank the Holy Spirit right now for having that in there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So good. <clears throat> that the communicate. So, so he said, well, I've heard of your love and faith and all that stuff. But, uh, and that's toward the Lord Jesus Christ. So he's contrasting a thing here. He's, there's a contrast of, of where you're at and where you should be in your understanding of the cross and of union with Christ. You're, st you're there with, I, I get to hear about your love, you know, and of your faith, and which you have toward the Lord Jesus, not the life, the lamb life, but the Lord Jesus that makes you a disciple or one going after him. You hear that? That's, that's what that is. It's a different relationship. Paul's trying to sh share with him on, a, on another level. So then the, the next part is um, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual. That good, praise God, you got faith. I heard about it. <laughs> but what it needs to be is more than inner faith that you have that gives you security because you're seeking the Lord. You need to have uh, a faith I walk with him in such a manner, and he, he calls it in you, in Christ, that you can communicate that. And when he says communication, he's talking about living it. Many, many times the word there means that it be life in you. Um, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual. In other words, it's actually happening by, how does it come? By the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Okay, so that's a good one to close on. We're going we're gonna to go, okay, so I want, the, I want my faith to become effectual. Uh, Lord, make it effectual. Hit me now. You know, um, you know and because you know, we're, 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 we're grabbing at straws trying to figure this thing out. And we're, we're doing all these things that are contrary to the way and the truth and the life, which is in Christ Jesus, okay? So may become effectual by just acknowledging, just start acknowledging all these things that have been said. You know, my identity is I'm dead. My identity is not in Christ. Christ is my life. He's the only one who rose from the dead. And he lives in me. And yes, he lives in my body. And yes, he flows through my personality. I'm not taking that away. I'm not saying you're just a non-entity. I never mean that. 
But there is a reality here that he's trying to say, okay, by acknowledging every good thing that's in you, because he, who's in you? He is in you. Every good thing that is in you in Christ has to be. Has to be. You can't get around it. It's all in him. We're in him. It's there. It can manifest. It can become effectual. But it has to come by the fact that he's it and we're in him and as such we're branches and every good thing that's going to come out is going to come through us not by us you bear fruit you don't produce it as a branch you bear fruit you don't produce it okay well then how do i bear fruit through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you, which is in Christ Jesus. That's the answer right there. Thank you, Book of Philemon. All right. Well, good. Then when we leave this class, go after him with all your heart. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. We seek you. We... we um, we want you, but at the same token, we have to say we stand in you. We are in you. We are found in you, not having our own righteousness. We are uh, blessed that we are secure even while we are not fully manifesting that which is real. We, wanna, we want it to manifest, Father. But we also know that there is no... Well, I, I know that there is no branch that has been grafted into a tree that very soon begins to start producing fruit. Father, seasons sometimes have to come and go. And Father, we have to trust your seasons. We have to trust that there are, there are, there's winter season when there's just not going to be any fruit, not supposed to be. We're just supposed to rest in the death. There are seasons of spring where it'll be overwhelming and it'll be so joyous, but it's not going to last because you're going to keep bringing us through the cycles of life so that more fruit will come and so that your son will be glorified as the life that is within us. And we want to acknowledge every good thing that is in us that's in us because we're in you, Jesus. So continue. Father, and continue to draw us and continue to make us thankful. Let us in everything begin to give thanks. If it's not real in us yet, Lord, may we give thanks for it. In Jesus' name. You know, I, I want to end with this. <clears throat> I, when my girls were little, I, Deb and I used to pray for their husbands. And we would, we didn't know who they were when they were, they were little, little when we started doing that. Lord, bring in the right one. We didn't say the perfect man or this. We said the right one, the one that, that will help them, that will bring them more into you, that will bring them more into your heart, whether that's through trials or through blessings or whatever. Doesn't matter. Lord, as parents, Lord. Do this. And we did it faithfully. <laughs> Until they got married. We did it faithfully. And um, there were years there before they were even grown or in high school or whatever. We were doing it. And someone would say, well, that's ridiculous. They're not marrying age. You know, that, that's like saying... Uh, well, I'm in Christ, but it's ridiculous to pray for the things that are in Christ to work in me. No. Pray for it now. Acknowledge it that you are in him. But pray for the manifestation also. But don't, don't make this one-dimensional by only thinking in terms of Christ being manifested out of you. Because long before you received Jesus in your heart for salvation, 
long before you did that, Jesus had already died and took you into him and, you know, and, and secured you. And I've often thought many, 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 many years ago it came to me how gracious and wonderful the Father is because he, he loved us and he wanted us and he put us in the most secure place you could ever find. He put us in his son. He could have put, he could have put us in a golden room with angels around with swords, but that wouldn't, wouldn't be secure enough. You know, and I've had people come to me and say, you know, Randy, I'm just, you know, worried. It just, you know, just feels like Jesus isn't, you know, moving or not dealing with me or whatever. Again, there's winter. There's there's a there's a winter time, but but I said to him, well, has do you think Jesus has fallen off the throne? You know, do you think that's it? Should we pray that that the, maybe the angels can help him get back up on him? You know, meaning he's secure. And our trust has to be in him, not in ourselves or our experiences. Amen? I already prayed, so bye.